today we're announcing uh, a, new, um, a new code complete model. So this model has 2.7 billion parameters. It is very small. We got 40% better performance than the best uh, open source code models. And uh, we're announcing today that we're open sourcing this model. And, and by the way, we're not even trying here. We trained our own AI, which is pretty cool. And if you saw Developer Day keynote, you'll know that not only is it our first attempt at this, but also that we absolutely smashed the competition in a bunch of benchmarks. That's unbelievable. More than that, we've open sourced the base model. It's up on Hugging Face if you want to go and get it and poke around with it now. But the refined version is coming to Replit. So let's see what a self-trained AI model looks like and how that works in practice. Now, if you've used Replit's Ghostwriter, you'll know it was already pretty good at getting to the point of what you wanted and helping you out. Certainly, it is the sort of thing that 10x is your coding experience. But let's start off with a reasonably simple challenge in Python. I've got a file here which is a report from a site survey and it's filled with IP addresses. I want to use regex to scrape out those IP addresses. I'm going to start with the original Ghostwriter code model. Remember, this isn't one we've trained ourselves and we'll see how it copes. So I'm going to start by asking it to get the contents of the file and yep, we're getting there, definitely. And then I'm going to ask it to create a subroutine to use regex to extract the IP addresses seems to be getting a little bit confused here. What's actually happening? Well, let's try and prompt it a bit better. Let's see if we can make sure that that is... Create a subroutine to use regex to extract the IP addresses from the words, which is the variable we've got it in. It's going there and it's getting a bit obsessed with the parts. I mean, okay. Uh, and it's really quite struggling with this actually, isn't it? Because it's got an idea of what it wants to do, but it's almost repeating itself. Now, Part of the issue here is the concept of code completion and what that looks like. This is using a one-shot code generation where it's going out each time as if it was the first time. And it's pulling in relevant contextual information, but sometimes what we get is this symptom where the old AI model tends to start getting in a loop, repeating itself, and not being fully aware of all the code it's generated already. Well, let's try those same prompts with the new model. So I'll start off once again by asking it to get the contents of the file. And it did that in a much shorter way. <laughs> and you can see that it's already starting to try and offer me things that it, that it thinks I should do. But let's give it the same prompt as the last one. We'll use regex to extract the IP address from contents, which is what the array in this case is called. And wow, that, what, three lines of code? Does it, does it work? Let's run it. <laughs> That's amazing. The code completion behavior here is much more consistent because it's not just using one shot single completion. It's actually repeatedly continuing that generation, which has given us much more accurate and look at this, much more efficient results. And it isn't getting stuck in a tears in a loop about everything that's going on. Now that's quite impressive. Our new model also has a bit of a personality. Take a look at this prompt. When you start giving it comments, Sometimes it shows its true colors. And the new model really has a personality and really does like programming. If I start off with a simple comment like, roses are red, and wait for it to autocomplete, <laughs> you'll see that it just wants to get to work really. But this is really nice. For some reason, the emergent behavior of this AI model is that it has a bit of a sense of humor and really likes coding. So it really has more of a sense of what it feels like to be a developer. More of that sense of humor and more of that fun with code. It has a lightheartedness that you don't get with other models. But you're not here for that. You're here for the work it can do. Let's try something a little bit more complex. So what about a larger, more complex project? Something that's not going to be done in a couple of lines of code. Well, our next example is to build an MNIST classifier which is a way of classifying digits from a big database. It's something that's widely used in testing machine learning. So we're probably gonna see imports of things like TensorFlow and maybe NumPy and all the classics of machine learning. Let's start off with the old model. So I'm gonna ask it to build it and just go. 
Okay, so it's trying to import things. It's using a library that I've never heard about, but fair enough. Here we go. And it's bringing data in and it's... Uh, oh, it's getting stuck in this loop about defining the size of the convolution layer and defining the size of the pooling layer. And again, this is that same issue you get. These behaviors where it's constantly single shot prompting and it's single shot prompting from the previous one. Now I can force this to start something new by putting more comments in and having more control over it, but it does need a bit more hand holding. Let's have a look at the new model and see what that does. <laughs> That's pretty impressive, isn't it? I mean, it is it knows what it's doing. It's getting there. We're keeping going. Okay, we seem to have got to the end. So let's run this. Okay, slight error in the code, but the previous one didn't have any workable code anyway, so let's just see if we can use Ghostwriter's model to fix that. And that could have been me pressing enter on the wrong line. Let's sort that out. And let's run it again. And boom! But it's working. The only thing it's complaining about is it hasn't got the data set to start with. <laughs> Arnie model is just blowing me away, honestly. I've been playing with it for a couple of days now, and the sorts of things it does and the sorts of help it gives you is a step up. It is a sea change in how Ghostwriter is going to be able to help you in your code completion. And more than this, this model is open source, so you can go and add it to your own projects if you like. It is making a massive difference to my coding ability. And whereas the old model might have 10x'd, this is 20 or 30x my coding prowess. But you know what? One of the key differences in this model is what it's been trained on. Now, our previous model was trained on C, C++, Go, Python, Java, and JavaScript. And as a result, could do all of those languages pretty well. But at my heart of hearts, I'm an old school PHP developer. So when I was trying to use Ghostwriter to autocomplete in PHP, it had a go and understood some of the concepts, but it wasn't as effective as when I was using it to develop. Python programs. Well, our new model has been trained on a massive amount of programming languages. Just take a look. That's 20 programming languages, including things like HTML, CSS that it hadn't seen before that are commonly used. TypeScript is in there, my favorite PHP, bit of SQL, even Markdown. There's so much in there that it's been trained on that it's able to work with now at a much more acceptable level. Let's take a look at one of those languages and, yeah, go on. Let's start with a bit of PHP and we'll look at situations where I may have had some issues in the past. So we'll start off with a very, very simple PHP test. And again, I'm gonna start with the old model. I'm gonna ask it to create 20 random numbers and then count how many are over 50 and out with the results. Okay, so starting off the prompt to create the list of 20 random numbers and <laughs> it's created 20 numbers in ascending order. Well, that's not quite random, but let's give it the benefit of the doubt. Now, this always used to trip it up. I asked for a for each loop. Now, I always forgot the syntax of a for each loop in PHP, so it was a commonly, it's something that I would commonly ask it for. Let's go through the list and count how many are over 50. Well, it's doing it, but it's not actually counting. It's just outputting the values each time, which isn't quite getting the point of it. So it's getting somewhere there, but it's not getting the point of it. And let's output the total number of, res of results. Well, it's just outputting the size of the array. And if we run it, well, <laughs> some of this code ain't valid. So it isn't gonna run. So you can see there that it had a good, the old model had a good stab at PHP, but it just wasn't trained on it. Some of the emergent behaviors it picked up there was understanding syntax and knowing a little bit about PHP, but it was clearly just having a go. Let's switch to the new model and see what we get. Right, create an array of 20 random numbers. Oh, that looks good, using rand, so between one and 100. Let's count how many are over 50. And good, it is actually counting now. It's incrementing that counter. It's instantiated the variable as well. That's pretty cool. Let's display the number. Oh, <laughs> it all works nice. Now, that's the difference actually being trained in a language makes. 
for any of you PHP devs, in fact, for any of you people working in any of these 20 languages here, you'll find the Ghostwriter and the model works much, much better for what you want it to work for. In fact, you'll be getting the same level of support now that our Python devs are getting with their code completion and suggestions. But all you old school PHP devs are probably thinking the same thing. When do you write PHP in the CLI? Well, yeah, fair enough. Let's see if we can build some sort of web output. I'm going to start with the old model once again. And what I'm going to ask it for very simply is I'm going to ask it to calculate the difference between a date typed into the text box and today's date. Ah, uh, okay. So it's getting a bit obsessed with taking parts and replacing the text string. And it's just getting stuck in that loop again, isn't it? That one shot problem. Again, I can press enter at any point here. I can stop the prompt. I can add a bit more comment to sort of get it back on the right track. But that's a lot of effort from me. Let's see what the new model does in the same place. What seems to be working fine. The only problem we haven't got is an ability to get that date value. So let's extend the prompt just a little bit and create a form for it. And it works perfectly. <laughs> Wonderful. We can build full apps with this. This is unbelievably cool. But it's not just for programming language now, is it? It's for Markdown as well. Let's take a look at how it works with Markdown. Now, currently, it's only enabled for inline Markdown. So you can't just make a .md file and work with that. However, the model is trained on it. So if you get it from Hugging Face and using it elsewhere, you can just point it at Markdown and it'll work. So let's start with the original model. I'm just going to do some sample things like a H1 heading. Oh, it's got heading two and then heading three and heading four, not the sort of right thing. Okay, let's see if we can make a list of items. And yeah, fair enough. What about an enumerated list? Well, okay, that's not an enumerated list. That's just a normal unordered list. And the bit I hate about Markdown, making a table. Let's see if we can make a table. For, uh, it sort of made a table. I mean, <laughs> that would be a good start for me in terms of remembering what the syntax is, but it's not particularly helpful. Let's flip over to the new model and see how we can uh, how we can go with that. Let's have a look. Okay, so H1 heading. Oh yeah, it's getting the idea. It's getting the idea. So it's adding the extra hashes to get that working. A normal list. Brilliant. Let's see if we can do an enumerated list. This is where the previous model failed. Yep. What about a table? Oh, spot on. Lovely. So we can even have our markdown writing improved and sped up and auto-completed with this model. Now, we are very excited about this model. If this is our ML team not even trying, then <laughs> that's quite amazing. You can go and try this out for yourself on Replit, or you can download the open source model from Hugging Face. We're currently working on refining that and getting up to those really high numbers that we've shown you in the keynote. It seems that actually smaller models with less latency and trained on really high quality data might have an edge over these huge models that have been trained on disparate giant sets of data when it comes to code completion. Stay tuned for more from Replit's AI team and go and try out the model for yourself. Go on, treat yourself.